Hello, welcome back. So, if you tuned in to my last reactions, I've been reacting to some Netherlands political videos, and I've really enjoyed learning about the political system in the Netherlands, and I would love to hear from you about anything else you think I should know, um, or videos you want me to react to next. I would love to learn more about it and dive into Dutch politics. Um, I also want to do something a little fun. I want to learn some other things about the Netherlands, too. So, I found eight surprising facts about the Netherlands, and so I'm going to be reacting to that. Let's dive into it. I'll put the link for this video in the description. Hi guys, I'm so happy you're watching this video because today I will share with you the most interesting facts, the most exciting and strange things about the Netherlands that I have experienced for the last two months uh, that uh, my family has spent here while we relocated to the Netherlands at the beginning of February in 2021. Well, tough time, but we did it. And I've collected enough information for you to share what was surprising for me, what was interesting to me, and what I paid my attention to. And the first thing is garbage situation, recycling. And everything this country does about recycling uh, things, and it is very great, I think. It is great that the Netherlands, they really know how to deal with a lot of garbage people produce, and it is a great example of the country uh, which recycles. Okay, speaking of this, that's really interesting. My friend told me the other day that the Netherlands, tell me if this is true or not, he said that the Netherlands purchases garbage from other countries to use for energy. I can't remember how exactly he said, but is that true? everything and knows how to deal with garbage. So you can sort out not only the garbage you have at home, but only when you go by train, when you walk, when you're in the street, you can recycle everywhere and it is really amazing. The yeah. second thing that I really love here is the infrastructure of the city where we live. We live in Almere and yes, I know that some Dutch people uh, consider Almere as uh, the most ugly, as the ugliest city of the Netherlands and that it is not Dutch uh, city at all because it doesn't have its nice... What city? What city did she say? The second thing that I really love here is the infrastructure of the city where we live. We live in Almere. And yes, I know that I know some that. Dutch people uh, consider Almere as uh, the most ugly. I wouldn't know how to spell that. I was going to look it up and see where it is, but I don't know how to, how to spell that as the ugliest city of the Netherlands and that it is not Dutch. Uh, city at all because it doesn't have this nice beautiful uh, old town it doesn't have this nice beautiful uh, city market nice to or me. whatever okay. but okay for my family for me it's really great because it is a modern city it has a really oh. nice infrastructure when I go out with my kids I'm not afraid of fast cars passing by I don't live by the highway and I really love that there are no cars in the places where you live, uh, where your home is. So you That's can nice. really, of course, you can reach your home by... I'm right next to a highway, so it is very busy. ...by car, so we have a car and we park it outside. But the city is made for cycling. The city has the special paths for the bus. And it is very fast to travel by bus. You don't stay in traffic jam. Oh. It's Look at that mural. That's so cool. She have an umbrella over her. Little black umbrella. That's a really cool mural. Really convenient to travel by bikes and it is really safe to just go out with the kids. That's what I love about uh, our Almere. But I also love the thing that all Dutch houses are different. Uh, every Dutch house... Dutch? I don't even need to say this because everyone probably knows it already. 
but Dutch architecture is so awesome. You guys seriously have the best architecture. I love Dutch buildings. Oh, and by the way, this is a little off topic, but I watched this show, International House Hunter, or House Hunters International. Have you guys ever seen that show? Um, and Shayla and I always get so annoyed because people, it happens in every episode for every country, but especially when they do the Netherlands episodes, if you don't know, House Hunters International is where people are moving, it's, it's about expats basically, I guess you would call it, uh, people moving into a different country, a lot of them from the United States, moving to the Netherlands, and every single episode they always are like it just doesn't have the the dutch charm that i'm looking for and we always just get so annoyed at this because we're like dude you are in the netherlands what are you talking about it doesn't have dutch charm it is dutch it is in the netherlands anyways Every uh, neighborhood has its like special vibe or something like that. And I have also noticed that Dutch people, they do really love decorating their homes. Each... One thing I have to say though, correct me if I'm wrong, but any clip I ever see of the Netherlands, look at this clip right here. Like the Netherlands just looks so clean to me. I know every city should be like that, right? But... Coming from someone from the United States, our streets are definitely not that clean. There's definitely trash all over the place. And uh, and I live in a fairly progressive area. It's not extremely progressive, but they are conscious of the litter and stuff. But it's also a tourism area, so we end up with a lot of trash inherently house have a special detail, some decoration in the front, some decoration in the backyard, and some of them are pretty, are really beautiful and pretty and cool. And, and because of the thing, the Dutch houses, they big, have really big windows, you can see that uh, inside interiors are also very beautiful and Dutch people, they really love to take care of their homes and this is something I want to learn from them. Another thing that really shocked me was uh, that Dutch kids, they just go out in a very cold weather without anything, without, you know, hat or scarf. How cold does it get in the Netherlands? Let me know in the comments or gloves, nothing, because, well, I'm Russian, and as a Russian person who lived eight years in Poland, we are actually used to cold weather, so cold weather is not the thing that scares me here. I'm okay with it, I'm okay with the snow, I'm okay with the rain, it's okay with the wind, with the strong wind of the northern sea, it's okay, but I am surprised by the fact that Dutch kids are not. Okay, so I'm curious if, by any chance, Expat Family Live, the channel that posted this video, if you happen to see this reaction, I would love to hear from you. Uh, out of the places you've lived, um, Poland, now the Netherlands, and your home place of Russia, which place did you like the most? What did you like about it? And what would you say the differences are between them? I'd really like to... You might already have a video about it. If you do, just let me know the video. I'd love to check it out. Not, well, equipped with clothes, let's say, uh, because when it is, let's say, plus three outside and it is raining and it is windy, what we do with Russian people, we put our hats on and we have our scarves and we have our really warm uh, coats and that's what we are used to, but... Dude looks so cool right here, man. This must be the, the whole family, I guess, huh? Oh, I went back too far. Oops. Outside, and it is raining, and it is windy. What we yeah, do with this dude right here. So cool, man. You just got that cool walk. We put our hats on, and we have our scarves, and we have our really warm uh, coats, and that's what we are used to, but... You know, another thing that's really attractive about the Netherlands to me is that 
it, it definitely depends on where you live in the United States because there are some extremely safe areas and then obviously there are some extremely not safe areas but there's a lot kind of in between and we were talking about this the other day is that depending on where you are in the US you might not feel very comfortable going walking on a trail or going with your family on a trail especially if you're close to a city center or a downtown um, in a lot of cities you probably wouldn't feel too safe about going on a city trail but I love in the Netherlands how everyone seems to be very active the city trails and the parks seem to be very safe so that's cool I see that even small kids even babies at one year in the they just go out without hats that's impressive for me and this is really surprising and it's a real shock here in the Netherlands. Another thing that I was used to in Russia and in Poland as well are the small shops right under let's say your flat or right in your little district. It's very popular that each and every district in those countries they have a lot of little shops uh, right under the building where you live or in the ground floor or on separate little shops, right? It's very common for this countries but here in the Netherlands what I see is that in our city of Almere so you have areas where you have only houses and you have areas specially for shops and all of them are situated located in a special area so you have quite a distance okay. between the place where you live uh, to the place where does that depend on the city or is it kind of like that everywhere in the Netherlands you can buy stuff, right? some products or whatever. From the one hand, it's a little bit inconvenient because you understand that when you are uh, lack of uh, bread or milk or something like that, you can't just go downstairs uh, to your ground floor and buy something. But on the other hand, it is good because, well, the first thing, it teaches you to plan your food beforehand. So you That's save really your money on planning. Building. That's what I like here. And also you can plan more healthy food. Uh, so you don't just buy whatever you like because it's just here. It's just on the ground floor. You plan your cooking. You plan your uh, products. And you try to... And you can eat healthier in this way. So that I think this distance can help you uh, just to change your eating behavior a little bit. But another thing that I don't really uh, like Dutch uh, food because it is full of unhealthy food, let's say so. For example, our nanny, she's Dutch and she bought us this uh, thing you put on the bread like chocolate and you can put cookies on the bread. That's, well, that's shocking for me. You just eat carbs with carbs and sugar and that's it. But, but it's quite popular. As an American, I am not opposed to that. <laughs> well, the Netherlands, so they eat bread with chocolate and um, butter. So it's fatty, it's sugary, and it's a lot of like low quality calories. But, well, they have it, they eat it. But to my opinion, it's not very healthy, but well, people like it. Another thing that I like and I try to get used to are the ticket system and transportation system. So in Poland, for example, you buy a ticket for a definite period of time. You can buy for 20 minutes, you can buy for an hour or so. But here you pay exactly for how many time and kilometers you cover, right? So I'm trying to get used to that you have to validate your transport card when you... I have a question too. How is public transportation in the Netherlands? Would you say it's good? get on that you may or may not know but it's not very good in the US transport on the bus and get off so uh, in Russia and as well as in Poland we don't have this point when we don't have to validate anything when we get off we only validate tickets when we get on and I'm trying to get used to this and not to forget to validate my uh, ticket when I get off so not to pay the full amount right a very big amount for my transport the other thing that got me really confused and a little bit lost in the Netherlands is the fact that they don't have 
the numbers of flats here. Let me explain what I what I mean. When you have an apartment building in Poland or in Russia, so you have the number of the building plus the number of the flat. For example, you have, the, let's say, the sunny street, uh, the building is number four, and the flat is number two, three, four, five, la 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 la, and etc. etc. And when I visited a friend, and she gave me her address. She gave me only the num the street and the number of the house. And I thought that she lives in a separate house like we do. But in reality, she lives in a flat. And I came to that apartment building and I was lost because I couldn't understand that the number of the apartment is like the number of a house, like a separate one. And I called her and she explained me and now I know that there are no like separate numbers for flats here like we have in Poland and in Russia. And the last but not the least point uh, that was surprising for me but I really love it is that the kids have an opportunity to work here from even 12 years when they are 12 years oh. old they can start from That's uh, interesting. working with the post for example or working in a shop or something like that and from 14 uh, the majority of teenagers they work and they have their own money they understand what is it to be a grown-up right to i think that's really great because you obviously education is important but i know some people in the united states and to each their own if you like to you know i'm not here to tell anyone how to do anything but i know a lot of people prefer their children to focus on school only and not to work. And I think, in my opinion, it's great to have both experiences because you need that real world job experience and managing income and, you know, but you also need the education. I think they're both important, but that's really interesting. You can start working from 12 years old in the Netherlands. I would have loved that when I was a kid because for some reason, when I was a kid, I just wanted to work so bad. I just wanted to make my own money. And I remember being maybe 14 and in the US, you can't legally work. As far as I know, at least in my state, you can't legally work until you're 16. And so in a lot of jobs, it's 18. Or if it involves alcohol or anything like that, then you must be 21. So the job I really wanted, I had to wait until I was 18. Um, and so I was just trying to get whatever job I could. I was 14 and I was sending emails to like businesses and I, I had no idea how the system worked. I thought somehow I could convince them over email. I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm 14. I have no work experience, but I'll work really hard. Uh, <laughs> I can't imagine what they thought when they saw those emails, but obviously they never replied. So we'll have um, like separate life from the parents and I really love it because it teaches you to be self-reliant, to be independent and to understand how much effort it takes to work and how much things cost. That's I what agree. I like and that's what I want to give my kids here and to learn from the Dutch people. Thank you guys for watching this video. I'm waiting for you in the comments. Let's discuss. That's a really good video. That's a good channel. I think that one deserves a like and a subscribe. Expat Family Live. Go check them out, guys. They have some good videos. So, anyways, one more thing before we depart. I do much more than just reaction videos, by the way, guys. I also do vlogging, and I also interview local business owners and entrepreneurs right here in my own community. And I'd really love for you to check those out. Um, so go to my channel, hit the like, hit the subscribe if you feel uh, that you would like to. Um, or go to patreon.com backslash localia if you want to get involved with me in the localia project. You can also get exclusive vlogs, live streams, much, much more. And uh, until next time, let me know what I should check out in the comments below. And see you guys soon.